Hello, my name is Carlos Soto and I'm a research fellow at the Faculty of Engineering of the University of Porto. And I'm here to give a quick presentation on our paper, Numerical Determination of Stress Intensity Factors Using the J-Integral and the Modified Virtual Crack Closure Technique. This presentation was submitted to the first Virtual European Conference on Fracture. So now I'm going to give a quick introduction on the topic at hand. So, Together with the development of numerical tools for stress and strain analysis, approaches to deal with fracture mechanics problems have been the object of continuous improvement. For linear elastic fracture mechanics problems, the determination of stress intensity factors, known as SIF, is available as a post-processing possibility in most commercial finite element software packages, such as ANSYS and Abacus, allowing the users to perform straightforward assessments of cracked mechanical parts or structures. However, Available techniques for SIF determination in post-processing of these commercial solutions are almost limited to the so-called displacement extrapolation method and the J-integral techniques. In the present work, the implementation of the J-integral technique is revised, considering a new finite element software named Omicron. Furthermore, a more recent technique, the modified virtual crack closure technique, known as MVCCT, is also implemented and evaluated. From this study, it is concluded that the MVCCT implementation is simpler than the J-integral and it allows to determine accurately SIFs even in mixed mode load conditions. So now I'm going to give a, a refresh on the, what is the modified virtual crack closure technique or MVCCT. So the MVCCT is a procedure used to determine the stress intensity factor based on the calculation of the strain energy release rate. By definition, the strain energy release rate, denoted by the letter G, is the decrease in strain energy, denoted by the letter U, per increase in fracture surface area, denoted by the letter capital A. We can now assume a body with a constant thickness of T, and the area of the fracture surface can now be written as the lowercase a times T. And so G can be written as shown here. Alternatively, the strain energy release rates can also be written as the quotient between the necessary work to virtually close a segment of a crack, denoted by the letter E, and the corresponding crack surface, denoted by the letter capital A. So it can be G can be written as shown here. Now this necessary work to close a segment of the crack can be calculated as shown here. But it should be noted that internal forces xj and yj are relative to the node j, which is the crack tip, while the displacements uh, uy and vi are relative to the neighboring nodes i and uh, i asterisk, which is the, since the nodes separated, now there's two nodes where there used to be only one. So this means that the work is an approximation, since the internal forces are, and displacements are relative to different, yet very close nodes. This is a particularity of the modified virtual crack closure technique, which assumes that the crack extension of delta A does not significantly alter the states at the crack tip. Now we can combine the previous two presented functions or equations and we can obtain these relationships to obtain the strain energy release rate for mode 1 and mode 2. The, also note that if an inclined crack is considered, a global capital X and Y referential should be used, and all vector quantities must first be transformed using a rotational matrix. So these equations are only valid for a referential that is aligned with the crack. Finally, we can obtain the stress intensity factor, denoted by the letter capital K, through these well-known relationships between K and G. So now I'm going to give a quick refresh on the J-integral. In the context of linear elastic fracture mechanics, the calculation of the J-integral is just another way to calculate the strain energy release rate, G, which in turn can be used to determine the stress intensity factor. So in linear elastic fracture mechanics, G equals J. The J integral in 2D was introduced by Rice in 1968. It is defined as shown here, and it is the integral around the counter gamma belonging to a solid that contains a crack whose facets are traction free. As shown in this figure, 
the contour gamma must start in one of the crux facets, go around the crux tip counterclockwise, and end on the other facet. Rice also showed that the value of the J-integral is always the same, even for different paths, meaning that the J-integral can be considered path-independent. Although there are various ways to numerically determine the J-integral, the most common procedures, they all have uh, some caveats. So in Omicron, the way that the J-integral determination was implemented was through this sum. So it's an approximation. And this sum was presented by Monteiro in his master thesis. But uh, this way, although it's an approximation of the integral, it's a very easy way to implement in a finite elements code. So the presented procedures to determine stress intensity factors will now be implemented in a, a new uh, software for finite element analysis. And this software is called Omicron. In order to verify that the software is correctly outputting the stress intensity factor, a simple problem or case study was taken into account. So this is just a simple plate subjected to a uniaxial tensile test. So for this problem, the analytical solution is already well known. And it's shown here on top. But this is only valid when A is it's much less than the width of the plate. So if this no longer is true, K is now obtained through this periodic equation. So it's a periodic crack. So to determine the stress intensity factor using the modified virtual crack closer technique, in the presented software, Omicron, the user simply needs to define the path on which the crack is allowed to vary in its length. So we can see here on the video that the software is varying the length of the crack and uh, it's going to calculate k, the stress intensity factor, based on the crack's length. So the crack here is not propagating; it's just being its length is just being uh, it's being varied. The software can uh, also uh, calculate the stress intensity factor using the J-integral, where the user simply needs to select the nodes which define the contour gamma on which the J-integral is going to be calculated. So this is more of a post-processing procedure. So now for some results, here on the graph on the left side, we can see the results for the modified virtual crack closer technique. So here, K, stress intensity factor, was calculated for various values of A, also meaning for various crack lengths. So we can see that uh, Omicron the software outputs values really close to the analytical solution of the periodic crack. So we have very good results using MVCCT. So on the right, we have a table for when this graph equals five. Uh, so when the crack's length equals five, we have the results here on the table for MVCCT. We also have it for J-integral, for the three contours that were defined. And we can see a relative difference to the analytical solution of 0.5% for the MVCCT and a maximum of 5.8%. But this value is for a contour defined really close to the crack tip, so it's, it should be ignored. And the real values of uh, relative difference is 1.4 and 2.6. So both uh, procedures give us really good results, but the MVCCT gives us the best results and it is the simplest method to program and it's also very simple to understand. So this was just a very quick presentation on our paper submitted to the virtual conference on fracture and if you want more details, you can see the paper. So thank you very much for your attention on this presentation.